UK summers getting drier. Across England, there's only been around 24% of normal rainfall that we would expect up to this point in July. And longer. The UK autumns are likely to become drier and more summer-like in terms of weather conditions, with less stormy weather that we see more in winter. Meanwhile, the Middle East sees exceptional rain. It shouldn't have been here at all. It doesn't rain this far north in the Gulf any time during the summer. It's Friday the 29th of July and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir. Welcome to Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the weather headlines. As temperatures waned last week, attention is now on the lack of rain across the UK. So exactly how dry has this summer been? Here's the man with the figures, Dr Mark McCarthy. So far, this has been actually a fairly dry summer, particularly this last month. During July, uh, we're looking at one of the driest Julys in England in our long records as it stands at the moment, with the data up to the 26th of July. Across England, there's only been around 24% of normal rainfall that we would expect up to this point in July, so very notably dry. Um, But that is also coming on the back of a succession of sort of drier than average months that go back to November of last year. Between November of last year and now, uh, February for large parts of the country was actually the only wetter than average month. So we have had something of a dry deficit Uh, in the months leading up to this summer and for the summer so far. Can we compare it to any other drier spells of weather through UK meteorological history? Well, a common comparison is with the summer of 1976 and a notable part, as well as the major heat wave that year, there was a very significant summer drought. And again, that was preceded by a very long extended dry spell before. In actual case, in the case of 1975-76, it was a very protracted dry spell that went back to May of 1975. And it was actually quite dry right through summer, autumn, winter, the spring leading up to that summer. If we look at the period from November 2021 through to June 2022, then that sort of winter, spring into early summer period has been the driest such period since 1976. Notably, August tends to be a bit of a wetter month through our summer, but we want the right kind of rain, don't we, to top up those rain gauges really to have uh, effective rainfall. We want some sort of persistent large scale rainfall uh, across the country to make that difference. Uh, And oftentimes we can get during the summer these convective events where we'll get very intense short duration rain events that will put a lot of rainfall over uh, a particular area in a short amount of time. So the UK is seeing a a significant dry spell at the moment. Is this indicative of what's happening across the the near continent? Well, with rainfall in particular, we find that uh, yet there are continental scale impacts. Um, So oftentimes when the UK is particularly dry, as in this case, then we'll also see dry conditions across parts of Western and Central Europe. And this can be associated with the uh, North Atlantic jet stream and storm track directing the storm systems further north. So we can see increased rainfall in places like Iceland, Norway, Scandinavia, for example. Dr Mark McCarthy, thank you. While much of Western Europe remains tinder dry, People in the Middle East were staggered this week by the arrival of heavy rain. Rob McKelvey is a meteorologist and weather anchor for the Al Jazeera news channel based in Qatar. Here, he describes the extraordinary scenes in a region that has never recorded summer rainfall. Thunder woke me up at 5.24 this morning. Tremendous downpours that lasted for, I don't know, seven or eight hours and left flooding in the streets, obviously. But the biggest thing is, it shouldn't have been here at all. It doesn't rain this far north in the Gulf any time during the summer. July's average rainfall is zero, 
for Doha and the average number of days with rain is also zero. So this is most unusual. When the monsoon bursts, the Indian monsoon is not far away from us and every year we catch the edge of it, not in Qatar, but on the Arabian Peninsula. So on the coast of Amman, there's a little city called Salala, and every year that has three months of drizzly overcast conditions and it all turns green, it's lovely. The only place that does that. There are a few mountains in northern Oman and in western Yemen, which get thunderstorms every now and again, a bit of a spillover of the moisture. But generally speaking, that's all we see of the monsoon. This year, when the monsoon burst in Pakistan, which it did at the early part of July, it produced tremendous thunderstorms, floods everywhere, flash floods, and significant damage and loss of life. And that first burst came across, well, more or less the Straits of Hormuz and caused flooding in Oman and went off across the south of Saudi Arabia. And I thought that was it. And then another burst, which didn't stop in Oman, it came across southern Iran, up the Gulf. It's just gone north. Uh, it's raining on the other side of the Gulf, which is Iran, flash floods there. And it will likely rain in a place called Ahwaz tomorrow, which was registering about 52 degrees Celsius two weeks ago, which is hot even for that part of the world. And now is looking forward to genuinely looking forward to rain, much cooler weather, but inevitably there'll be flash floods as a mountainous part of Iraq. Tell me about the response from locals. Are they sitting out in the rain and just getting a bit of a soaking or are they concerned about their homes? Mostly they're loving it because it's so hot and it's very humid recently. So if it rains in the middle of summer, it's great. You get out and dance. I was out in it this morning. Um, not many people are that concerned. You do get some pretty deep floods because drainage in a desert country is usually not particularly good. So one or two places will be flooded. But because this happens probably once or twice a year, normally in the winter, either in the summer, then they're used to the potential. So they'll get out of the way anyway. Okay. One more thing to think about um, that we haven't mentioned, because this is monsoon systems part of the global network of seasonal rain. If you look at what's happened in Africa recently, because the monsoon trough was so much further north, the easterly waves that tend to come off the Ethiopian highlands are also stronger than usual, producing a lot more rain. They always produce flooding in South Sudan, Central African Republic, and all the way west to Guinea and uh, Senegal, for example. But this year, they too are stronger. So that's bringing what I think is probably more welcome rain in North Africa. But there's another consequence we should probably look to. Those are often baby hurricanes. Hurricanes start in these easterly waves when they leave the African shore. And although it's a little early to find anything in the Atlantic yet, if this carries on, that could be an indicator of quite active hurricanes this year. Back here in the UK, climate model trends suggest our summers will be drier and hotter. But what about the length of the season? New research suggests UK summers really are getting longer. Rosie Oakes spoke to Met Office scientist Daniel Cottrell to find out more. Our latest work shows that UK autumns are likely to become drier and more summer-like in terms of weather conditions, with less stormy weather that we see more in winter. And this is a change that we are likely to begin seeing perhaps over the next 10 years. What evidence suggests this observations that you've made? So we find these changes through something called weather patterns. Each weather pattern over the UK brings certain characteristics, whether that's rainfall or temperature. We basically look at a number of climate models. And what we find is that weather patterns that occur more in the summer are beginning to occur more at the start of autumn. And weather patterns such as sort of big stormy ones, you tend to get more in winter occurring slightly less in autumn in the future. And this is how we know that this is potentially likely to change. What are the factors that are driving this change, do you think? One of the things we look at in our research is we compare a very low emission scenario to a future period, a very high emission scenario. And what we see is these effects are a lot stronger in the high emission scenarios. And this suggests that these changes in weather patterns are due to human influence and the effect that warming has on circulation. What weather trends could we experience during early autumn? Is it drier or warmer? Which signals stronger? In terms of autumn becoming drier, this is a signal we'll start to 
perhaps see over the next 10 years. We're likely to see a 4 to 12 percent reduction in rainfall in English regions in the future. And this depends very much on the greenhouse gas emission scenarios. And one of the things we're already seeing in autumn is we're seeing increasing temperatures and we're also seeing an increase in the number of extreme rainfall events. But in the future, we're likely to see this drying effect as well. So overall, we're going to see less rain, but you think we'll see more extreme rainfall events? Exactly. So a good example of this is back in 2020, we saw the UK's wettest day in record on the 3rd of October. Enough rainfall fell on the UK on that day to fill Loch Ness. However, if you look at the overall rainfall for autumn, it's actually only 6% above average. And that was because we're seeing drier Septembers. Daniel Cotterall talking to Dr Rosie Oakes. And the full recording of that conversation will be available on our Mostly Climate channel next week. Now with the outlook for the next few days, Luke Mile. Hello, we've got some changeable weather as we head through this coming weekend, but through the rest of Friday, there'll be some sunshine around across the UK. In fact, the best of that across southern areas through the rest of this afternoon. As we start the day on Saturday then, quite a wet picture for large parts of the country, a bit of a disappointing start to the day, but it will improve somewhat through the day. I think uh, the rain will start to ease for Scotland. We'll see some brighter skies coming through, one or two showers around, but you'll see that rain does persist for parts of Cumbria, Lancashire, and also through the northwest of Wales. To the south of it, though, it stays dry. There'll be some sunny breaks developing in that cloud. A bit more cloud, though, than what we've had through Friday, but still temperatures getting to 28 degrees. That's pretty warm and humid once again. Through Saturday evening, we continue to see that frontal system move away, some clearer skies then developing across the north of the UK. But further south, the cloud and rain gathers and we start to see some heavier rain pushing in for Wales, the Midlands and also the southwest of England. Now, some of these areas haven't seen a lot of rain through July, so this will be welcome rain for farmers and growers. Temperatures still on the very mild side across the south, a warm night, 17, 18 degrees, but much colder across the west of Scotland where we could see those temperatures down to mid single figures in a few places. So through Sunday then we'll see that rain starting to push its way in. It will bring the risk of some rain or showers for many southern parts of the country. Still some uncertainty as to how far that rain will get to the east, so there may still not be that much rain for the southeast of England and those temperatures here where we do see some sunshine will still be on the warm and humid side but the best of the sunshine through Sunday will likely to be for the north of the UK where it will feel a bit fresher with those temperatures nearer to normal. Thanks Luke. Just before we go Alex Burkle has last week's highs and lows. Here are the UK weather extremes for the week beginning Monday 18th of July, the week that the UK recorded its highest ever temperature and numerous other temperature records across the country were broken. The highest temperature of the week was in Coningsby, Lincolnshire, on Tuesday 19th of July, when the mercury peaked at 40.3 Celsius, breaking the previous national record of 38.7 Celsius, which was set in July 2019 at Cambridge. Many other sites across England also saw temperatures exceed this 38.7 Celsius figure with a cluster across the southeast also crossing the 40 degrees threshold. Last week, during the heat wave, there were also many tropical nights when temperatures didn't fall below 20 degrees. And again, the UK highest minimum record was broken when the overnight air temperature at Kenley in Surrey held at 25.8 Celsius. As the heat wave waned, the nights began to cool. The lowest minima was on Thursday 21st of July when Swerth Funnon in Ceredigion, Wales, fell to a low of 5.1 Celsius. The end of the week was marked by significant thundery rain in the north and west. McGilligan in County Londonderry, Northern Ireland, measured 64.4 millimetres of rain during Saturday before heavy downpours transferred to western Scotland. And finally, the sunniest day was also the hottest day, Tuesday 19th when Weyborn in Norfolk clocked up 13.9 hours of sunshine. Thanks, Alex. That's it for Weather Snap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.